interfaces of friends and colleagues and many not so familiar ones too. Uh, so I I was invited to speak, not, not to sing. Uh, that, that, that was not part of the deal. Uh, so I will speak. I noticed that the announcements of today's event says, if you enjoy jargon field talks and in eligible PowerPoint slides, this is not the conference for you. Well, the, 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 the truth is, most of our academic conferences actually are not like that, like, not like this one, right? I, I have attended hundreds of them. And I'm convinced that every single academic event should start with a disclaimer. Today's speakers come in many shapes, colors, and shades of boring. <laughs> it's like a rainbow of boring. I cannot promise uh, anything about my talk, but at least you know that my slide will not be illegible. It's gonna be illegible, not, not too many words. And I will not have deconstruction or paradigm in my talk. Uh, so, so where shall we begin the talk today? This is the, the, the title. I will just start with the first word, written. Uh, so what is written? In music, rhythm is the organization or flow of music through time, a regular rapturing pulsation that about music into equal time units of time. So rhythms can be defined as a placement of sounds in time. Without rhythms, music wouldn't have any structure or periodicity. But we don't use the rhythm is everywhere. In fact, our life, our everyday life unfolds within patterns of flows that possesses rhythmic qualities. The heartbeat of our chest, right? in the footsteps of our strides, in the language we speak. Good afternoon, everybody. No, it's not afternoon. Good morning, everybody, right? We're not starless. That's afternoon, too, right? Uh, senoras and senores, selamat pagi, saudara and so, saudari sekalian. And that's a different kind of rhythm. Or in Arabic, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That's absolutely different rhythms. Culture is produced, practiced, and sustained in rhythms through rites, rituals, and rules. And then technology brings in new rules, new rhythms. For example, uh, in Europe, uh, 16th century, the, in contrast to seasonal rhythms which govern agricultural works or the church bells, which pattern the daily round of clergy, the pace set by the printing machine was relentless and unceasing, establishing the rhythm of efficiency. Now I will go to the next one, which is algorithm. So what is algorithm? Does algorithm spark you joy? <laughs> Mary Kondo, if you don't know, it was so outdated. Then you don't really know, right? <laughs> Try to learn someone of your thing. <laughs> and some say his algorithm is oppressive. It's really? Algorithm is biased. Is algorithm bad? If it is really bad, can we make algorithm great again? <laughs> so is algorithm after all. Let's hear from someone who actually uh, we'll... Uh, doesn't really... Actually, it should say, it should actually recite something. It is an audio file. But if it's not, doesn't work, it's like I could survive. I'll survive. 
Why don't you speak on that, Dave Alden? We'll all help you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it works before. Uh, the moment you've all been waiting for. We got through 40 minutes without a technical failure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try this one. ومثل قولك خمسة أموال تعدل عشرة أجدار فالمال الواحد يعدل يدلين وكادر المال اثنان والمال أربعة وكذلك ما كثر من الأموال أو قل يرد إلى ما So I'll stop there. I come, I came from a, I, I, I was born and I raised, I was raised in, in Indonesia. You in Indonesia can ask, don't really speak Arabic? Read Arabic, probably understand what it is. So I, I kind of, I was, I'm, I'm able to read, but I don't really know what I say. <laughs> so and then people in Indonesia, but also in some other countries uh, that are primarily Muslim, associate Arabic with with Holy Script. So people think that anything in Arabic is holy, right? It's like the words of God. But this is not one of them. So let me translate what we just heard. As for square and roots equal to a number, it is as when you say this, a square and ten of its roots equal 39 dirham. Its meaning is that the square, if you add to it the equivalent of ten of its roots, it will become 39. So this is considered the first algorithm. Created by the father, the father of algebra, Muhammad ibn Musa al khwarizmi uh, a 9th century Persian mathemat mathematician and astronomer. Since then, algorithmic procedure has been instrumental in the development uh, of fundamental ideas. Practice led to theory just as much as the other way around. So broadly speaking, algorithm can be defined as an ambiguous specification of how to solve a class of problems. Or in other words, is it a same set of defined steps, structure to process instruction, or data to produce an output. There's input, there's output, there's a definite step. Recipe is one of them, right? Because there is no there is a finite, like a ten step. Right? You have to do this, 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 this. So, algorithm is like that. It's not like what you think. Most people think algorithm is some like some new thing. We've been practicing algorithm for for a while. So, both rhythm and algorithms concerned with the repetition, <laughs> measure, and calculation. There is no rhythm without repetition in time and space, but also without measure. But there is no identical absolute repetition indefinitely. When it concerns the everyday rites, rituals, and rules, there is always something new and unforeseen that introduces itself, itself into the repetitive, which is called difference. If measure and calculations are constitutive aspect of rhythms, and if repetition entails difference, then a focus of algorithms suggests to us a need to rethink measure, linearity, and cycle as effects of rhythms making process. 
Accordingly, the multiple and entangled character of rhythms require the interaction between human bodies and everyday life on one hand, and the co and organizational processes, which are algorithmic processes to be accommodated. So some of you know that I spent several years of my early career uh, at CISPO. Uh, that was born in 99, but I was in there in 99, I was like somewhere else. <laughs> but I came here in 2006. Uh, I spent six years at CISPO. One thing that was exciting about CISPO at that moment, which probably is still true today, was that CISPO would never force us, faculty, researcher, graduate student, to think inside the box of any disciplines, or even outside the box. So CISPO box tends to be multi or interdisciplinary. But if you are like me, you would just get rid of the box and throw it away and be undisciplinary. So please consider my talk as inter, trans, and undisciplinary. So in my talk, I'm proposing a spatial, spatial temporal framework of analysis inspired by French philosopher Henri, Le, Henri Lefebvre. I think that's the way to pronounce it or not. Works on the rhythm analysis. And taking it into my study of media and communication of collective activism and social movements. So here I can see social movements as a network of people who challenge or maintain the status quo by moving together in coordinated and collectively shared rhythms over time and space. However, as we live in the mediated and mediatized society, where media environment has become increasingly algorithmic, I see the need to incorporate algorithmic-based analysis into my framework. In what I call algorithmic analysis, namely a framework for analyzing the rhythmics and algorithmic patterns of urban and media spaces and their effects on the formation of collectives and communities in those spaces. So extending for my recently completed research, which is Roots, Routes, and Routers, my algorithmic analysis is particularly useful to make sense. This is the, this is roots, uh, routes, I will not go talk about this one, and routers. My algorithmic analysis is particularly useful to make sense of both progressive and regressive and other type of movements such as uh, far right, alt right, come into being and further hold an algorithmic environment of social media is utilized in the process. And uh, the process in which algorithm might have contributed to the further marginalization, radicalization, and other social problems are not causative in nature. These processes are insidious and cannot be separated the, from the more rhythmical societal environment. So I'm actually at the beginning of this. This is like, I've been thinking about this for months since then asked me to come, I said, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this thing. Uh, I said, doodle, so that's my paper, that's done. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, I, I don't know, any journal want to publish doodle? So through my, my limitation of time I have, I will not be able to really discuss my term for compressive comprehensively. What I will do is to walk through some very various empirical snapshots and and it will be like, not linear, it's just jump here and jump there. You just have to follow me, you have to bear with me. Uh, and I will provide you with some understanding of this framework. I'll start with this one. Have you ever seen this one? Probably not. This is, a, this is one of the, the pictures that was viral in social media in, in Canadian setting. Uh, I think in, in January this year. So, right on the right is the photo of Yellow Fest Canada, which is United We Roll Protest, and on the left is the image from what? Guess what it is. So, this is actually the final meme. Let's go. Right? So, uh, 
Yellow pests, so FYI, the yellow pests groups in Canada are copycats of environment movement in France against the carbon tax, the cost of living, and much more, tend to be uh, very, it's not, as a movement, it's not like alt right per se, but there are components of far right and alt right groups that like, become dominant in the, in the, in the, in the group. So, they, they were very, uh, they were really dominant on media, or also on social media. But then when you look at the actual protest, this is a more of a more health, we're held in front of Parliament Hill, right? And the, the, the yellow face was actually not very well attended. Uh, United we all, they were like coming with truck and confederation flags and, and uh, all kind of things as you saw in the U.S. actually, the alt-right for right uh, protest in the U.S. Uh, so, and you're gonna tell me, okay, you cannot compare yoga and uh, what, political movements, right? It's like comparing, well, orange and apple, or probably to be more precise, like comparing lemon and little lemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one took place in the winter, the other in the summer, one is political, the other is apolitical, one came with the trucks, other came, came with, with sky, skin tight compression pants. But ultimately, what are collectives? What gathering were resulted from the series of organizing and mobilizing efforts. Both were composed of smaller networks of people over multiple specialities and temporalities. Why do you think the yoga crowd is larger? Yeah, you probably think there are many, many reasons, you know, cause, perceived dangers, reactionary. But it is wrong to assume that thousands of people doing yoga, or, but, but, also, but it is wrong to assume that to get hundreds or thousands of people to do downward, downward dog together is easy. It didn't happen overnight. The most popular yoga on the hill, at the Parliament Hill of Ottawa in Canada, uh, was actually sponsored by Lulu Lemon. It's been held every Wednesday noon weekly from first week of May until last week of August for the last 11 years. This year is the 12th year. And the first uh, yoga, Parliament Hill yoga, in 2007 was actually attended by six people. Yeah, it was like six people. And by the end of the season, you think that you're going to get hundreds? No. By the end of the season, it only increased into 30. So at that moment, carrying yoga mat in downtown Ottawa was an odd beat. It was, an, it was weird. What were these weirdos? Right? What is Lulu Lemon? You know, like a bright outfit and just carrying yoga mat in 2007? <laughs> but if you go to Ottawa, downtown Ottawa today, I think, I actually, I suspect people bring yoga mat to their office. Or they have it one in the car or, or somewhere, everywhere. <laughs> because it seems to me that people are always ready to do yoga. But not only that, because yoga has become habitually. Uh, embedded in the rhythms of urban life, including in actually there is a there is a capital hill yoga. Uh, uh, I think being held in the last I suppose seven years. Uh, so repetition, multiplication of spaces to accommodate that what happened. Research show that most people tend to participate in collective physical activity when space to do to do it located in their neighborhood. So there are more yoga yoga studios emerging all over. People are more willing to do it. There are local spatial rhythms that accommodate big events such as this. Now let's take the algorithmic part of the, the these collectives. 
the yoga thing, there is none. So it's not relevant by itself, like tweeting, right? When it's already embedded in the local spatial rhythmics and people know, people do it. People don't really need outward big moments. They don't need final moment to collectivize. They just do because it's part of the rhythms. Well, the United Mineral Convoy, Yellow Pass Canada, is actually very busy on Twitter. They're so loud, hijacking other type of conversation. There are moderate at more than once in the future. There's a, a conversation on Twitter is very binary, extreme in nature. It's more about anti-something rather than doing something together. And uh, uh, we see that there is a different nature. But again, you probably say, huh, that's, that's not really good comparison. Let's compare lemon to lemon then, right? Yellow to yellow. Or let's say lemon to citron, right? <laughs> Right? I don't know, my French is bad. So, <laughs> uh, so this is Yellow Canada. was inspired by uh, Mouvement de Gelotong, which is Yellow Pass French. Uh, while they share the same name, they are not quite the same. They are, they are not quite the same. Uh, the French uh, uh, Mouvement de Gelotong is actually uh, is rooted in diverse issue. You could see here, uh, it's, it's issue there. We are about income disparities, austerity measure, tax repeal, uh, traffic enforcement camera, globalization from big to small issues. Uh, and uh, while Europe as Canada literally really is anti Trudeau, uh, anti liberal movements, move, and try liberal government movements. Is the issue is pipeline? Really want to build pipeline against carbon tax and against the current immigration policies. The seemingly is like sympathetic to terrorism. So really, the the, the they are different in nature. Uh, very different, right? On the ground, the the French movement was actually quite grassroots and, and diverse, very plural, uh, complex. Uh, the Canadian one is less so. And, but when you move to the, this is Twitter uh, uh, mapping of the issues, very quickly both were captured by the politics of personalities, the binary opposition of discourse, that the words, right? It's not necessarily what it is, what the movement, I mean, they don't reflect what the movement is all about. They're like just about what they hate. When they actually use the term freedom of expression, it's really freedom to hate what they're exercising. The, the French one is like literally anti Macron, anti Semitic, uh, uh, anti Semitic, and anti Muslim. And uh, uh, we, big uh, far-right uh, leaders take advantage of this, like the fan, right? Uh, in, 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 in Canada, it, it's anti-immigration, anti-Islam, make Canada great again, kind of movement, so anti-Trudeau. So, so I'll try to explain a little bit why this happened. Social media actually existed for years without content filtering algorithm. When Facebook came out, right, actually they were not, uh, the, their feet reflect the timeline as its content that was within the timeline as it was. But why they became algorithmics? First, social media algorithm actually exists to push brands to pay for social ads. The, th the theory is that brands cannot reach their audience organically. So they will turn to ads instead, instead, which earn money for the social networks. Because the organically, you, you cannot target the market. So the, the micro advertising emerge to actually target 
a certain uh, market, segmented market. Uh, second, there are a lot of more users on social media than that there were in, uh, 10 years ago. As a result, user feeds are packed with more content and effort. So social media algorithms are supposed to make it easier, right, as it helps you, it can help you for people to see updates from the account they actually care about. Um, so what does social algorithm, media algorithm look like? There are many factors <coughs> accounted in the algorithms. But essentially, their underpinning ideal typology is sorting algorithms, which is an algorithm that put, puts elements of a list in a certain order, such as numerical order or lexicographical orders. The combination, this is a very quick um, explanation, the combination of sorting algorithm principle and its focus on targeted advertisement resulted in an algorithm that is biased to the superlatives. Because finer granularities of population of clustering is costly. It's costly for marketing. They would rather see what you hate and what you like, rather than, eh, I'm not sure, I don't know, like, not so blue between blue and red. No, we don't care about what you you are not sure about. If your face is talk too complex, we don't want to even count you because that's costly. That's why we ended up with cute scat, right? Drooling baby, and the most resist to it. The extremes get benefit from uh, the sorting algorithm. So, well, music is about rhythms. Selling music is about algorithms. Culture is about rhythm. Marketing culture is about algorithms. So, so these algorithmic dynamic perpetuates what I, the formation of what I term algorithmic enclaves, which are formed where uh, whenever a group of individuals facilitated by their constant interaction with algorithms attempt to create a perceived share identity online for defending their beliefs and protecting the resources from both real and perceived, especially perceived threats. These enclaves are a type of imagined community. Unlike filter bubble, algorithmic enclave is actually dynamic. They are, these are not, these are interacting with other enclaves, but mostly on their antagonistic in nature, in their relationship. Therefore, they become like, they, the, the, the whole uh, discourse is like a binary, anti-something, rather than uh, trying to find common interests. So these enclaves are a type of image and communities that is techno-socially techno constructed. On oh, that's an SDS jargon, techno-socially constructed, but I like it. <laughs> it's a useful, useful one. User and algorithm mutually shape in each other in sorting, classifying, hierarchizing of people, information, and political preferences. So that's about that effort. Let's go to the real movements. Uh, more, more, more snapshot. <clears throat> so in analyzing a uh, movement, I have long argued that a movement starts before it surfaces and becomes visible in public, whether it is through street rallies or protests and parks. Uh, they emerge before we know they existed. Uh, one of the example is the Hong Kong uh, Occupy Hong Kong movements, 2014. It didn't start on the street, at the square, or on the Instagram. First, the movement cannot be separated from Hong Kong long historical rhythms of urban streets, march, march culture, student activism, and labor uni unionism, all of which have extensive, robust record of public civic engagement. Second, the movement is also rooted in the establishment of the Occupy Central with Love and Peace in Hong Kong that was founded by Benny Tai. Of a professor of law at Hong Kong University only a year prior to the Occupy movement in September 2014. So this Occupy Hong Kong was actually 
was an amalgamation of various smaller social groups that emerged through different everyday, everyday cyclical rhythms. Uh, I was in Hong Kong and spent time with Benny Tai in his little office, and he showed me, and then we look around campus, he showed me places where students meet and chat, like a year prior to the uh, event, and still did at that moment. He is in jail right now. Uh, so during a four month period before the official formation of Occupy Hong Kong in September 2013, over 30 deliberative meetings involving around 3,000 participants were held. These participants met at school, churches, and community centers to engage in difficult conversation, to deliberate and together to lead a collective imaginary of a freer, more democratic Hong Kong. As blogger, later on, blogger and Instagrammer joined the conversation, the assemblage of rhythmical and algorithmical spaces was created. The algorithmic moments that were created by Hong Kong movement was not actually separated from the more rhythmical connection and practices that happened within such a long span of time. Another, uh, another stories, another uh, uh, snapshot is what I call the case of sneaker net. Sneaker net, I don't know a sneaker, but some of you, yeah. Sneaker, sneaker net, Indonesia. So the initial protests of the 2011 Indonesian uprising suffered a lack of coverage. Uh, the only media, international media, covered Tunisian uprising was New York Times, and it was not a headline. It was like 1.2 centimeter down, on the, like very little. Oh, it was like there is like a riot in Tunisia. That, that's the, and that was like after three weeks. So for three weeks, nobody knew what's happening. In, in, right? So in 2010, the state rhythms of control propaganda had become more prominent. Uh, additionally, some earlier protests took place in the poor <coughs> area of regions, interior region that had no reliable internet connection. So in January 2011, when massive protests broke out in the town is the uh, in Kasserin Tahuntala near, near Tunisian Algerian border. The government cracked down the protests, resulting in brutal massacre and blocked the information flow. However, people couldn't prevent uh, news, uh, however, the government couldn't prevent people of Tala and Kasserin from broadcasting their situation. People took videos with their mobile phones and pocket cameras documenting police brutality and passed them to activists who transferred them to memory card and activists with memory cards inside sneakers and threw the sneaker over the border to Algeria. These cards eventually reached the hands of activists in Tunis and some reached Al Jazeera news desk. These rhythms were not an impromptu or happenstance that been practicing creating these movements of people and information for over two years. So they had already infrastructure, people knew, and they've been practicing when the crisis happened, this rhythmical arrangement became useful. So facilitated by this hybrid communication network, the massacre in Tala and Kasserin outreach to nations across the country and lay the seed for the uprising to become a genuinely nationwide phenomenon. So in both stories, the rhythms in time create social space through serendipitous and predictable ordinary <coughs> encounters. People in multiple sites of origin of social movement, that is digital, hybrid, in person, they come together to form, share imaginary as rhythms and algorithms of their practices into spaces start to shift, cohere, 
and connect. And the increasingly coherent rhythms gets the attention and transpire into an algorithmic moment. Now I jump to uh, this way. So social movement movements are political embodiment of human connection. At the core of social movement is connectivity, without which movement would be impossible. Here we see the centrality of human, also non-human routers, who end up enable connectivity between people, social groups, networks, and places. But I will focus only on the human routers today. Because human body is a political object for excellence. Its form, capacity, behavior, gestures, movements, potential, uh, and potential are primary object of political contestation. Human body is the carrier of the beat, the makeup of the rhythms. The first one is uh, the first type of movement. Bodies, human bodies that are important in social movement is burning bodies. A term I use to include bodies whose, whose actions are radical or who are in extreme condition, even when they are not burned. They are radical human routers who not only connect people to each other, but like fire, can potentially spread the resistance to manifold expansive networks. The burning, the burning body is an offbeat that creates arrhythmia, a term used in medicine for a condition in which the heart beats with an irregular or abnormal rhythms. And when it happens, it creates shock to the entire body. You notice there's something wrong, right? When there is skip a bit, or it beats too fast or too slow. Uh, you know the right picture is uh, Wasisi from Tunisia. The right one, is it, oh, no, the left one, is actually from Malaysia, from Malaysian Percy uh, electoral reform movement that is quite successful. Um, it's actually went on for over a, a decade. During the Malaysian Bersi 2.0 protest, one of the most viral images was the picture of an elderly woman drenched in rain and chemical waste water, walking away from riot police while clutching onto a stem long flower and near empty mineral, mineral, mineral water bottle. The frail, aging body of 65 years old Annie Oi Shulan, who is nicknamed Lady Bersi, Auntie Bersi, and called Malaysian Lady of Liberty, is a burning body, is an arrhythmia, that spark resistance in the online spheres of Malaysia at home and globally. But body doesn't have to always be burned in, 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 in order to spark the resistance. In modern society, body and mass consent to participate in political ritual, allowing a political institution to subject use, transform, and in, improve them as it fits. The government uses human bodies to, in a rhythmical way, like flag ceremony, right, subject to certain reporting, to, to uh, actually being manipulated to, to participate in ritual that support some undemocratic system. But protests, when body descends together, they actually uh, protest is actually intimately connected to corporeal realities, whereby the descending body disrupt literally and figure figuratively by present and action. They are collected by seeing multiple of beats into a new rhythms and challenge the dominant one. They turn in invisible resistance into a visual spectacle. They convert grievances into a display of collective power. They concretize social movement claim making. But also the moving bodies, the events in Cairo and the Arab uh, uh, Tahrir uprising show that moving bodies are important human routers in urban setting where streets are crowded 
an encounter with strangers are common. While the initial call for protests were posted on social media, the protests themselves began in a number of key mosques and churches. While mar marching toward the square, Egyptians on the st street waved their hands and urged Egyptians watching them from balconies and windows to join them. The connection between the moving, ryth moving rhythms of bodies on the ground and the rhythms of body on the balconies led to the expansion of the movements. But movement, uh, moving bodies can also perform connectivities between the rural and urban areas that in the case of Malaysia, also represented online and offline technological and non-technological spaces. To reach out people in rural areas, Malaysian activist democracy movement initiated Bring Your News Back to Village project, which is uh, called Bali Kampung in its original language, is a rhythmical annual Islamic tradition among Malay Muslim during the Eid holiday where Muslims return to the village. The project, that is a Bring the News Back to Your Village project, instructed those who were going back to the village to share versus related uh, information with their families and friends. Could, they could take form in the form of an offline soft copy set on USB card, hard copies, or CDs, or blog posting, website, and YouTube videos. The sharer, however, are, were human routers, moving bodies who acted as a bridges, liaison between rural and urban community, synchronizing the rural and urban rhythms of resistance. But bodies doesn't always have to be, to always move to be rendered political or act as human political routers for social movements. As ba a, ba a body who speaks, yell, chants, or sing is the focal body who render a body political, but exercising the power of self-expression. In January 2011, the chants echo in Habib Bourguiba, Afghanistan, Tunis. Ashad Yurik Ishar al Nisam, the people who wants to bring down the region. So, soon, the same chant reverberated at the Tahrir Square in the street of Cairo, traveled to Bahrain, resounded in protest across Yemen, and spray as gravity on the wall of Dira in southern Syria. The chanting bodies are collectively producing one voice and noise to break the silence and at the same time, temporarily sil silencing the dominant power, the dominant rhythms that try to silence them. One such chance speeches or songs flow in the labyrinths of information networks. These become their own routers. The rhythms travel through time and reproduce time again and, ag and again by focal bodies of the future. Years after the Arab uprising largely disappeared from the Arab street, the hybrid network of communication and media keep the chants alive and sustain, keep the chants alive and, and sustain them. It's been play and replay on YouTube, share and be share on Facebook, retweet, tweet it and retweet it on Twitter. It was echo back in the street of Tunis seven years after 2011 uprising, it's been spoken, chanted, sung again and again by vocal bodies of Arabs and non-Arabs globally to remind, to remind that the people still want to bring the regime. While the song of the so-called Arab Spring have ended, the rhythms and algorithms of resistance continue. However, a Gen Z is, always, is not always directly audible, open, or spoken loud in clear and un unambiguous ways. Instead, the sound of withdrawal, silent, and sonic disengagement too can be considered political. It is also a form of arith arithmetic resistance. On May 23rd in 2015, hundreds of people, but we Egyptian Canadians gathered in Yomidunda Square of Toronto. The silent body stood up in contrast 
with the lack of quiet, of noisy streets of Toronto. Through silence, they loudly voiced their protest against the government of Egypt under, under LCC, in particular, the unjust execution of young activists. They demonstrated an arithmetic resistance through silence. And they show that the silent body would still speak against the repression. In silence, vocal bodies act and resist beyond voice and, and noise. Human body is the most important and yet the most fragile brothers in the network of social movement. They contribute to the algorithm and rhythms of movement through health and abuse, <coughs> present and absent, vocality and silence. So the song may end, but the rhythm is here to say. Social movement all over the world will continue to emerge, coalesce, struggles, people, and eventually decline and fade away as have all social movements in the history of humankind. Regardless which trajectories and shoes, within the legacy of these movements, people will continue to collectivize, engage with power, and struggle for change. Hybrid human communication information networks that include both rhythmical and algorithmical spatialities and temporalities will always become part of these struggles and human bodies continue to be the site where rhythms and algorithms are rather political. Thank you. They represent a different clustering, basically. Uh, so the Twitter, in the same, with Twitter there are the same color, they are belong to the same cluster. They are more connected to each other. So. Are they clustered around gates? No, they cluster uh, around well, the, the mapping, the mining is around uh, these, let's say, uh, certain hashtags, certain keywords. And once you show how they, whether they live with each other, they uh, reply, there will be lines. And the more they interact with each other, they will be clustered together. So it's like a social network analysis type. Um, so, so tell me if I understood this right, that in terms of the way you're thinking about the world, what, what Twitter and other social media has done is it has, it has taken the, um, the complex rhythms of thinking and expression, reduced them to a, um, a, a binaural I hate, I like, uh, or I dislike, I like, um, flattened out all the rhythms and and um, uh, and turned it into um, uh, something that simply provides a signal for the marketplace to know whether or not uh, or how to sell stuff better. Is that basically the, the, the theory? Uh, yeah, I think that's more or less. Basically, I think it started. It's all social media, something social networking platform. It started as as a with the purpose of connecting people. But then it became a place where, just like any other media, right? Become a place to, to for corporation, to market. And 
human connection, the way people collectivize is just simply too complex for marketing modeling to capture. So marketing, this is not new, right? Marketing model basically by babies all over the world into those who like pink and those who like blue, right? And and that's to simplify. I'm thinking that everybody don't have choices, but whatever choices that you want. But what is it more interesting, I guess, because uh, with social media is that the the fast content that we produce is not parallel with the diversity on how we might connect with each other. Because the logic of this algorithm, which is driven certain type of algorithms, or the algorithm that is adopted by this platform to cater advertising, really force this uh, uh, affected, affect like basically emotion-based uh, type of clustering, which you know you like or you don't like. If you don't like <coughs> love, you don't have. In in rhythmical society, actually people who are quiet might find other people who are quiet, like like a, a more sort of to connect with the other people. <coughs> The missing, the missing, the invisibility is usually not always a, 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 a witness. So you could connect by withdrawal, but there is no such thing. You don't participate, you don't, you are not counted. Uh, but also, there are five, is it five emoticons on Facebook, right? Like what? Love, like, sad, uh, wow, right? If you don't feel wow, it's not counted. So that's the whole emotion, exploitation of emotionally based type of like expression. And simplify as if those are the only matter, it's the limit up to the way we think of the other. Really. Because you no longer do know. The rich, no, it's not that like the content are not there. They're just less, they're blurry. Because this, the quantification of the extreme emotion prevails in this landscape. But, but what drives that is the, is the value of the hate versus like for, the, for marketing. Yeah, for marketing. And that's prevail over other five because that's where the money is. Why would you want to get a human connection and uh, because they don't, they don't make money. And the political campaigning, literally using this micro advertising to campaign, therefore politics too can do to that. Yeah, thanks, Melinda. This is great. Um, I want to push back a little bit, though, on the uh, standard social science response to everything these days, which is that it's all the fault of capital. Um, the, the reality of social organization for the last 10,000 years is that it falls into patterns of simplification, but that we find that social ordering and social organization uh, happens through these practices of, of, uh, of simplification, of turning things into binary kinds of relationships, um, uh, in and out categories, right? We see this in academia, we have disciplines, places <coughs> like this become deeply problematic precisely because we don't fit into the easy categories of, of do you like econometrics econ 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 or do you not like econ Right? Do you like King Cohen and Verba? Do you not like King Cohen and Verba? Right? Do you like mathematics? Do you not like mathematics? Right? Uh, when we think about na nationalism and the history of nationalism, right? it's, it's, it's about organizing around these more simpler ideas that allow for the creation of inclusion and, and exclusion. And so it doesn't seem to me that we can put all this on the at the hands of, of marketing it is the struggle to create order out of the precisely the, the infinite varieties of human experience uh, and, and to turn those into the opportunities for, for collectively acting 
that at some level requires us to make things less complex with all of the dangers and that, that then come with that exercise. I agree with you. Uh, and I'm not necessarily agreeing that it's all about capital. I think, of course, I don't have much time to explain everything. But there is a, in fact, what is what we see in algorithmic sort of bias or driven collectivism is not necessarily emerged by itself. There is technological bias, there is existing social bias, which is the way we organize ourselves, except that it's amplified. It's amplified because you have a fast, we are talking about sheer number, increased number of whom we could be connected to algorithmic uh, base in a way that we couldn't before, right? Suddenly, you could, you could basically, the fact that uh, uh, alt right movements that operate on Twitter move, they, they, they work, the same group actually worked on Twitter with bots and trolls and uh, during Trump campaign, and they stopped in December. They re emerged uh, in the French election, and they stopped again. They now go to Canada before the federal election. This is new, the shifting sort of like easier to do that. And, uh, and you are right, social movement always simplify the, the narratives because how to organize a big number of people without oversimplifying, of, without simplifying. I agree with you. I think all of these things, so the whole, I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily uh, 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 fantasizing rhythmics, rhythmical system. But I think because all of this rhythmical, the way we, we deal with, we connect with each other, it should translate into the new ways, right? The new ways doesn't care, it's not a problem. Except there are certain things that become more feasible. It's easier, right? To collectivize based on uh, habit is be, has become easier because that's precisely what, what is actually catered to. Um, the design enable our tendency and amplify existing tendency of our our ways of collectivizing and organizing. Thank you.